<laughs> There'll be two, probably two. Yeah, so I talked about what's on the final, right? Didn't I? Didn't I tell you everything? So let's get going. So um, let's wrap this course up. We've just got four problems left to go. So um, I'll draw a triangle here. And um, the hypotenuse is 9. One angle is 38. And they're going to ask me for the, like the shorter side, the, longer, the shorter leg, longer leg kind of thing. Remember what we talked about, about how across in a, in a triangle, you have a small, medium, and large <coughs> angles, and across from them are the small, medium, and large sides. Mm -hmm. Remember that? That's, that's the thing they're keying on on this problem. Right, because the opening of an angle, as you open up an angle, it makes the side across from it larger or smaller. Right, the opening of an angle affects the side across from it, doesn't it? So as you look at this triangle, for example, which side is, is, is the smallest side? The top left. Isn't, isn't the bottom? Oh, I thought you were talking about the angle. Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right on the angle, yeah. So smallest side, so that's the smallest side. And what's the largest side? The hypotenuse, that's always the biggest side in a right triangle, huh? And then this is the medium side. And then across from them are the angles. So across from the smallest side, yeah, there's the smallest angle, huh? Across from the medium, there's the medium. And then, of course, the 90 is the biggest angle across from the biggest side. Yeah, so that's always how it works in a triangle, just reemphasizing that small, medium, large thing in a triangle. Okay, so let me go back and draw the triangle thing again. Okay, so back to it. This is 9. Now, what are they saying? 38 is one of the angles. Well, how do you know... If 38 is like the small angle or the medium angle? The smallest. <clears throat> how'd you know? You're right. Yeah, we already explained this yesterday. Did I? Yeah. So how do we find the other one? It's all about finding the other one, huh? Because the other one is, is already visibly bigger. And it wouldn't make sense to put the smallest in, on the medium side. Right, right. And we can actually find it by subtracting from 90. Mm -hmm. Right? Because 180, any triangle is 180, we're already using up 90 with the right angle. Mm -hmm. So there's only 90 left for the other two angles. So 90 minus 38 is the other one, which is 52. Yeah, so that's bigger, 52 bigger than 38. So the 52 must be the medium here, across from the medium side, and the 38 must be there. It's the smallest angle, which is across from the small side. All right, so there's the setup. With that in mind, this is the small side, this is the medium side, which is the same thing as longer leg. It's the longer of the two legs. It's the medium side, longer leg. Okay. So here we go. We want to find the small side first off, the shorter leg. So I want to find the small side. So I want to set up a trig relationship, don't I, that uses the small side. And I'll just use the 52. You could use the 38. It doesn't matter at all. I'll just use 52. The small side. And what? Should I use the medium side? Yeah, it seems right. It's a no because I don't want two unknowns. Huh? You need to have only one unknown, so I better use the nine. So if I use the 52, the small, and the 9, the only unknown will be the small. Just one unknown at a time, right? So that is, from the 52's perspective, and again, I could have done the 38, it doesn't matter, but I chose the 52. From the 52's perspective, this is the what side? Adjacent. That's adjacent because it's next to it. This is the hypotenuse, so this is the opposite side, huh? So from the 52's perspective, this is the adjacent side. This is next to it. All right, so I want a trig relationship involving the 52, the adjacent, and the hypotenuse. Remember Sokotoa? Sokotoa, yeah. Cosine is adjacent hypotenuse. Yeah, cosine. So cosine of 52 is adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent is the uh, small side, I'll just call it small, over the hypotenuse, which is 9. So a bit of cosine 52 over 1, diagonal, diagonal. So 9... Cosine 52 is 1 times the small side. So that means the small side equals whatever 9 cosine 52 is. And I came out 5.54. Then we'll one, oh, tenth. So just 5.5. So the small side must be 5.5. Okay, and then how do we find, how do we find the um, medium side, which is the longer leg? Yeah. <coughs> yeah, we want to use this with the 52 and this. That's opposite hypotenuse. Or you could do adjacent. I'm probably not going to use the adjacent because that's a rounded number. I'd rather use a number that's not rounded. So I'm going to use opposite and hypotenuse. So that is uh, sine, huh? So sine 52 opposite over hypotenuse, which is medium side over the hypotenuse, which is 9. Put it over 1. Diagonal, diagonal. 
9 sine 52 is 1 times the medium. So the medium is 9 sine 52. I'm getting 7.1 for the medium side, which is the longer leg. And we're done. Make sense on that? Again, you could have done this whole thing with a 38-degree angle. That would have worked fine as well. All as well. Hey, y'all saw your scores go up by 7 on Math Excel. Luis, I still think you should all give him a one-point tax. Hey, hey, I, no? I, the second one, I, I came in clutch. Is, is that your economic philosophy, huh? right? <laughs> Ta tax and tax and pay? No, no, no. I, I always think it's funny. Some people's economic philosophy is not the same as their grade <laughs> philosophy, right? If somebody's having a little more trouble, should we all... Anyway, yeah, I'll just leave no, it at that. We gotta come in clutch. No, it's <laughs> and it's not exactly. In all fairness, there are differences. That one's easy. These are easy at the end. Easy section for you, I think. That's right. The trickle down. That's right. You're gonna just pass out the wealth. Well, I don't know. Are you, Luis? Well, you did. You, you shared. You shared your knowledge on the test. It's helping everybody. All right. So um, yeah, so you should have seen your scores go up by seven. I added seven on Math Excel. That was our agreement, right? So I went from uh, oh. <laughs> these are high scores. I got to make these tests without so many mistakes next time. There were three mistakes. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. The next class, Dino. Maybe the final has lots of mistakes, but it's rigged, professor. Is it rigged? Yeah. <laughs> right. Luis, you better look for mistakes during the final because there's no day after. <laughs> yeah, a lot of pressure. Oh. Email. <laughs> yeah, there's email, huh? All right, so let's try this one. They want us to find side AC, which is right here. That's what they're asking us to find. Is that? I'm, I can't see. Yeah, yeah it's, I can it's a little see. rough to see, huh? This is, um, here, I can just redraw it like this. <clears throat> Basically, this is a 40-degree angle. This is 150, and they want us to find that X there. <coughs> is, what they're, is what they're saying. Sign of 40, uh, right? Opposite or adjacent? Well, um, yeah, so, so remember, Sokoto, opposite over adjacent is right. Sokoto is, because, yeah, this is opposite, this is adjacent, this is hypotenuse. So which one's opposite over adjacent? Tangent, actually, huh? Tangent tops over adjacent, yeah. So there's a tangent on that one, because it's true, it is opposite and adjacent that we want, huh? So tangent, tangent of 40 is opposite, X over adjacent. 150, that good? Yep. And so then put that over one, zip, zip, because that's opposite adjacent, huh? So you get 150 tangent 40 equals one times x, x equals whatever that is, 150 tangent 40. 125, two places, 125, 86. And there we go. Is that good? Questions on that? All right. All right. So, yeah, so this one is kind of interesting. You can actually figure out how far you are away from something. They're saying this is 70 high. The angle of elevation is 25 degrees. And you're going to figure out how far you are you from you. This is you here. And this is the base of the mountain or whatever it is right there. And they want to figure out how far you are. So <clears throat> this is the programming that exists in instruments that detect distance based on angles. So, for example, if you're out at sea and you have, um, the, now they have lasers. It used to be they had something called a sextant, which is an instrument you look through to spot the top of something. Now it's all laser stuff. But if you had some instrument that, that shot a laser, say you're like out in the ocean, you know, you're, but you're, you're the, you can see the beach a ways away, and there's a lighthouse, and you know how tall the lighthouse is. That's pretty, I think they're pretty standard. I don't know, you can probably go on Google and find out how tall lighthouses are. And so you would know how tall, the, you would know that number, and you would take your laser instrument, and you'd raise it up till it hits the top from where your ship is way out here in the ocean till it aims at the top of the lighthouse, and you would, it would tell you that angle, and you know how tall the lighthouse is, so you can figure out how far out from the beach you are. So using some trig. So and that's what's programmed in the little laser thing. That's how they, somebody writes a program that uses that trigonometry. That's how it computes your distance based upon things like that. That's how these instruments work. Some people are paid big bucks to write these little programs because they understand this mathematics and some computer science as well, of course. So try that. Can you figure out X there? 
So from the 25 degree angles perspective, this is opposite adjacent hypotenuse. So Sokotoa. So we're talking opposite and adjacent. It's tangent again. It's, like it's always tangent. So tangent, 25 degrees, is opposite over adjacent is 70 over x. Put it over 1, diagonal, diagonal. x tan 25 is 1 times 70. <clears throat> Divide by the tan of 25. Boom. X is 70 over tan. 70 over tan 25. Uh, 150. How many places do they want? Two places. 150.1. Oh, 115. So the second place is actually going to become a 2, isn't it? 150.12. <clears throat> That's how far away you are from the beach. Down. I'm not that far. You can swim it. Unless it's miles. Oh, it's meters. All right. Good. Questions on that? All is good? Easy stuff. There, you can check them. All right. So we have a triangle, same kind of thing. State trooper is, is time in uh, a truck. And so this is 30. And this is our angle theta. And they tell me theta is 14. So this is 14 degrees right there. And this distance right here, notice, the distance is how far the truck goes in one second. So find that distance. What they're asking you is basically find that distance that the truck went in that one second. So from the 14 degree perspective, this is opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse, right? And um, we've got Sokotoa. And what, what do we want on this one? We want to use the 30 and the adjacent, which is what we're trying to find, huh? So opposite adjacent is tangent again, isn't it? So tangent of 14 degrees is opposite over adjacent is 30 over the adjacent side, which is what we're trying to find. Put this over 1, diagonal, diagonal. So I got A tan 14 is 1 times 30 divided by tan 14. Boom. The adjacent side is whatever 30 divided by tan 14 is. It's the 120. Point thirty-two. That's how I got that answer right there. And that's feet, right? Everything's in feet. This is 30 feet. So everything's in feet. And this is in one second. He went that many feet in one second. So that actually becomes feet per second. That's how many feet the truck covered in that one second. So that's how many feet per second he was going, right? Is that good? That's a rate, 120 feet per second. So I'm basically busting the guy going... 120 feet per second. Well, now we want to turn that into miles per hour. And I already have. It's 82 miles an hour. That's why he's getting busted. Because it's too fast. So how do we take feet per second and turn it into miles per hour? Cyrus. You times by 16, and that makes it uh, feet per minute. And times that by 16, that makes it uh, an hour. Right. That'd be feet per hour. But how do I go to miles per hour? Yeah, so let's, let's, come, let's go through that. So we're all, we're all good in the first part, right? So let's go to the second part. So, <coughs> excuse me. We have, what was it, 120. So we have 120.32 feet per second, and we want to convert to miles per hour. Now, I learned to convert units in chemistry, actually, not in math class. Oh. I don't know if you've taken some chemistry. But they were greatly helpful to that. Feet per one second. So first off, turn it into a fraction. 120.32 feet per second means over seconds, right? It's a fraction. And so what I learned from chemistry class is that you basically want to cancel units. Focus on what you want to get rid of. In the end, what do I want? I want miles 
per hour, which is also a fraction. I want miles per hour. So just think this way. Think, okay, do I want feet? Is feet something I want to keep around? No. No, I want to get rid of feet. So if feet are on the top and I want to get rid of them, where am I going to put them? On the bottom. On the bottom. Yeah, you cross-cancel units. So that'll make feet go away. See how I know where to put the feet. Now, what can I go from feet to? What do, what do I want to go to on the top? Miles. miles. I want miles. Does anybody know the relationship? So that's how they sit. That's how I know it's miles over feet instead of feet over miles because I cross-cancel feet. Feet are gone right now, right? Now, anybody know the relationship between miles and feet? 5,000 feet. Hey, I'm impressed. You know that off the top of your head or is that Google? No, off the top of my head. All right. Yeah. Uh, make sure you know that for the final. No, I'm kidding. I'll give you that if you do that. 5,280 feet. So 5,280 feet in one mile. So you just write the 5,200 feet in one mile. If I was to stop the problem right now, I'm not going to, but if I was, what would be my units that are left standing? 120.32 It would be miles per second, wouldn't it, if I stopped right now? Because feet are gone. What's left is miles on the top, seconds on the bottom. Now, remember what you're motivated by. Every step you think, okay, have I arrived? No. Well, I've got miles, and that part's good. Seconds. But I got seconds. That part's not good. I don't want seconds. You're always motivated by what you want to get rid of. Just multiply that by 60, right? Where, and where, where am I going to put? Don't worry about the numbers. Yeah, what I learned in chemistry, actually, it's funny, like the first time, you know, that, that intro chemistry class, I never took chemistry in high school. Remember, I was a goofball in high school, and then I got to junior college and kind of grew up. I took that, so I had to take that basic intro chemistry class. And the first time I took the test on the units, I didn't get it. I just worked really hard, converted. Yeah, I would do the numbers right away, and I'd work really hard. Right after the test was over, it, like, dawned on me. Oh, it's not hard. You just put the units down first, and then everything else just flows. So in other words, don't think 60, top, bottom, just think, look. Just think about the words first. Just the words. Seconds is on the bottom. I don't want seconds in the end. So where am I going to put seconds? Top. You can cross cancel far away like that. It's fine. Makes sense? No numbers yet. The numbers come later. The words go first. That's what I didn't get until after the exam. Then I got it. So uh, seconds cancel. Now, what can I eat? Don't work hard on this. This is the other thing. I work hard. I go seconds. I'm going to go to hours. Okay, hours. How many hours? And I work hard. Eh, I don't need to work hard. The method. If you get the method, it's like having a long wrench. You just pull a little bit. It turns the nut. You don't, you don't need to work hard if you have the right tool. So what can I easily go to? If some, what's easy in your mind from seconds? Seconds to minutes. You know that without even straining, right? One minute is 60 seconds, right? We all know that. So that's easy. Now, if I stop the problem right now, what words are left? Minutes. It would be, miles. well, it'd be miles on the top, minutes on the bottom. It'd be miles per minute. That's almost right, but there's something I want to, I, I want to keep the miles. I'm, not, I'm happy with miles, but what am I not happy with? Minutes. minutes. Okay, so what do you do to get rid of minutes? You're always motivated by what you want to get rid of, right? What do I want to get rid of? Minutes. So where am I going to put minutes? Top. Remember, words first, numbers follow. Minutes first. Boom, boom. Bye-bye minutes. And what do I want to go to? Hours. Hours. Okay, and that one's easy. You know that one off the top. Now, see, first, first put them down in the order they go in. See how I know it's minutes on the top? Because minutes have to cross-cancel. You're always cross-canceling, right? So in one hour, 60 minutes. See, I didn't think ahead of time, oh, I need to multiply by 60 or I need to divide by 60 because this is bigger or small. Don't think all that. That's what I did the first time I took the test. I strained my brain thinking all hard about that. Just write down the words. It'll tell you what to do with the numbers. The words will guide the process. So right now, if I stop the problem, what's left not crossed out? Miles per hour. I've arrived. I'm at miles per hour. Now, now... What do you do with the numbers? Any number on the top multiplies, any number on the bottom divides. Any order, doesn't matter at all. So just take 120.32 times 60 times 60 divided by 5280. Or you can divide by the 5280 first, then multiply. But anything top multiplies, anything bottom divides. Hit the buttons on your calculator, you'll get 82.0 miles per hour. That's how you convert units for any conversions of units. Miles per hour. Is that good on that? So that truck needs a ticket. Okay. I forgot my well, radar, so. Got another speed limit. <laughs> All right. We good?
All right. Oh, and that's our last question. We are good, good. Look at that. We are good. I'm going to stop that.